Jill here. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be really doing quite a project, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I have received another human hair topper from Uniwigs and you know as most human toppers that you find out there this one is longer and I actually want to transform this topper into something right around the same length here as what I'm wearing today this is by the way uh, Raquel Welch flirt alert in shaded wheat so this is about the length now of my own bio hair, hair, my real hair. I just trimmed that baby off without thinking twice about it, knowing it would be much easier to get under a wig. But that's okay because I have a couple toppers actually that are very close to this length because I trimmed them very early on when I was first getting into toppers. So here is the box gold foiled uniwigs. This is lovely because it's so easy to store. It doesn't take up much room at all and it fits perfectly in here. Here is here is how perfectly perfect it is in here. Um, there was tissue that was over the top of there. I just have taken it out and looked at it already. But I put it back exactly how I how it came. So we're gonna take off this. These also have this really nice, and I always keep these. They're great for travel and for putting them back into a box like this, which makes it, again, really great for packing and traveling. But there's this, this plastic form here, and it just keeps kind of your topper being stored really nice so it doesn't get creased and do anything weird. And Uniwigs, you know, they always make sure that you're, you've got what you need. So we have three extra clips here in case, you know, one of them goes funky, you can replace it. Or, you know, if you need one somewhere else in the topper, you can always add another. So this topper is called Emily. It's got a really nice density, very natural. Here we have the full mono top. This is gonna let you part this incredibly natural parting anywhere, anywhere really, anywhere in this topper, which is really nice. But you're gonna find that however it comes to you, that part's in there really, really, really good. You can change it up though, and I'm gonna just show you what I'm gonna do to do that. There are a lot of different ways you can. Okay. So as you can see, this isn't a, a super long piece, which I love, but we are still gonna be trimming quite a bit off of this. And don't get upset at that, you know, it's, to me, this is what topper shopping should be like, you know, especially when you're looking, and you can do this for any, you can do it for synthetic as well. If you like the shape and the color, you can still trim those as well. Human hair toppers especially, I feel like this is the core piece, you know, this is the, the base piece. And, you know, if I'm looking, I, am you know, perhaps chose it because I like the cap, I like the cap features, and I love the color. So then I can do anything I want to it after that. And that's what I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys. So this particular piece does not have a clip right here in front. I do prefer that they have that. Even though I'm very, very sparse here in front, I can back home a little bit, really nice and gently. I can put a little hairspray in there and that would act as my anchor because these side clips never do much of anything for me because I am so, so sparse right in here and that's usually where they kind of want to clip. It's doesn't do much at all. So I really rely on my front clip to secure my toppers. So because they have sent me extra ones, I will definitely go ahead and sew one right here in the very front. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on Emily here. I'm really gonna kinda cheat on this for, for visual sake, actually, for my own visual sake. And I'm, even though this is basically a middle part that's on here, just for try on sake, I'm gonna use the part that they have in there. I don't recommend you do this, but um, I'm gonna use that part, see that middle part, and I'm gonna move it over to where I, uh, I have my hair parted. So <laughs> we're gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna be cutting uh, a lot off of this, but for now, let's just, uh, Let's just see what it looks like because it'll help me, I think, kind of get an idea. So 
I have this fairly secure, but not as secure as I like it because I really love, love having that metal clip there to do that for me, but that's okay. No, pro no problem there. And I'm just going to kind of take my own hair that I do not have any fill in powder on at all right now. And we're just going to kind of brush this in. And as you can see where my own hair is, that is, I'm going to leave about an inch longer than my regular hair when I trim this. But as you can see, you know, we're going to be trimming off quite a bit. This hair is definitely just kind of stuck here to the part. Um, I want a lot more body in there and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. But when I do go to cut this hair, I am, and if you take it to someone who, who's willing, a stylist or whatever, that's willing to work on your toppers or your wigs, and but yet they don't have a lot of experience, just let them know to kind of leave about, if you're trying to blend this into your, your regular hair, I always like to take it a little bit longer because when I curl it and style it, it's going to go up a little bit. This is human hair and it's going to behave like that a little. And you know how when you curl, it kind of bumps it up a little bit. I still want that coverage down there. And so I always try to remember to not cut it perfectly to where my hair is, but leave it a little bit longer. Uh, so anywho, okay. So we have a very much a kind of a Morticia thing going on here, um, but that's okay. Then you can kind of see the before and after. I'm super excited. I'm always hoping that it turns out. I always just kind of have that attitude that it will, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so I have fill-in powder. When I wear, you know, something around this color, I have a lot of gray and I have very, very, you know, very sparse right here in front. And I can see, you know, that topper right through there. So one of the things that helps that, both the gray and blending my normal hair into this color and or also making sure that you can't see right through to the topper, I use fill-in powder. This is very inexpensive comparably to some others out there. I think it works fine. And this particular color is called dark brown. I get it at Ulta. You can order it online too. And it's uh, it, it goes through pretty quickly, but that's okay. It always comes with a stippling brush like this. And what I like to do is I just take this all along the hairline. So we're going to do that right now, even though, you know, I'm not remotely, haven't started working with this topper yet, but we're going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to stick it right here, right up to that topper. And I, I even kind of put it on the topper itself. And I'm going to bring it down here because I actually have hair right there. It's very baby fine but it's there, so I want to accentuate my hairline where it is a little bit more than it does, and it will really help the overall natural look uh, when we're done here. So I'm just gonna kinda pull it taut right here so I can get down to the scalp, and then I like to bring it right on through. It's okay if this is a little darker than whatever color you're needing. As long as it's a warmer color, this uh, color works really well. I find it doesn't work well if it's a very cool color. This is too warm of a brown for that. So here we go. We're right about at the part again. So I'm going to, again, just kind of work it in. I'm going to bring it up. Work it up into the hair, mute out those edges. I have a tiny little bit of a widow's peak, not much. And I'm just going to kind of take this right along my hairline. Here I have my little tiny, tiny baby hairs that come clear out to there. So I'm going to just kind of accentuate that, get it on my scalp mostly. You do want to do both sides of your hair, even though you're thinking, well, I part my hair that way, it's going to cover it up. Well, you know, the wind blows and, or you might just, 
you know, bend over, put your hair behind your ear. You kind of want them both to look really nice. And then you're going to take your finger and really just kind of feather out those edges that will create kind of a shadow effect. And then Okay, so, I mean, that already looks so much better. So much better right away. So, okay guys, I'm gonna take you all into my bathroom. Lighting isn't gonna be so great, but that's where I have to go to do all of this, so let's get in there. Let me move this aside here. Um, I'm gonna now actually put this back on the middle and because I want this to be straight I want this cap to fit me the way it's supposed to so let's do that because even before I dampen this down I want to see about how short I'm gonna need to trim this because I'm not gonna start styling this until I've cut it so let's get this in the middle and that's about here so, here is where my hair is. I want it to be a little longer than that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dampen it a little bit with this water just to kind of get a little bit of that um, box hair out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is establish a general length that I'm going to have this. And I'm going to go for... Again, I'm going to do it about an inch longer than my hair right now. And so I'm going to go for just about right here. I just need to find some place that I can put that in. And I'm just going to do this right here. Let's see. That might be a little long, uh, even with curling and whatnot. So I will probably shorten that up a little more even. So I'm going to I'm going to go for about right here. I'm going to bevel I'm going to actually cut this one a little bit at an angle cuz it's toward my face. And I don't want a straight bob style. So um, I am going to kind of get that going. And then I'm going to go ahead and take off probably another inch. It's best to to go uh you know, it's it's best to be safe <laughs> than sorry. So I always cut longer the first time, even when I'm cutting somebody's hair. Okay, so I think that's good because as you can see, it's it is definitely longer than my my regular hair. So that way, if I curl it, it'll kind of go up right about where we need it to. That give me a, a good idea as to where I need to go here to the other side. I'm going to brush this forward, not the whole thing, just a little. And there is where I cut. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this now on this side. And that will give me a gauge as to what to do over here. Right here. It's a little longer. Move that out of my face so I can see. And I'm going to take this about here. So, now I'm going to take this off and I am going to put it on my styrofoam head. So I'm going to do that now. Okay guys, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to get this to where you guys can see something. These have obviously a front and a back. So the, the part that, you know, kind of is bigger and curves back this way is the back. So the other thing is that it has a center seam and that is the middle of the face. So we are going to get this pinned right here in the middle and you have to look at your clips more than anything. Don't look at the part so much. Look at the clips and you know kind of get that where it needs to be. And I'm just going to stick one here. Stick one here. 
and I'll just do one toward the back here. Okay, that feels good. I can feel around for them later because I'm gonna need to kind of style this hair a little bit. Okay, so let me take this off so you can see here what I'm gonna be doing. So we have the sides here. So now that I have this, I can literally just turn it around and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just follow this guide all the way around. Okay, I'm gonna cut this into my trash can. And because I'm always over cautious, this might still be a little bit uh, too long. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna plug this this guy in. So let's do that now. And we're gonna use this to just get some lift right here at the part. And I'm gonna turn this on. soften I want to soften around the face a little bit so I'm gonna not take too too much right from the beginning but I do want to definitely soften around the face so when I do decide to curl this it will be kind of softer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just really bring this in and I'm going to cut it bluntly right now, but then I'm going to thin it just a little bit at the very ends, this angle. It's going to have to be definitely a longer, more vertical cut, so that's what we're going to do. I don't really want to cut my own hair, so I'm going to cut this quite a bit longer. So I'm going to go at a vertical line here. And then while I have this freshly cut, I'm gonna grab my thinning shears and I'm just gonna to go about even an inch longer than where I did that, which is why I left an inch to begin with. Um, and then I'm gonna take that now and line up this guide to that new shortest piece. It's all about points, you know, when you're cutting, getting rid of those points. So here's my longest piece. This right in here is what I'm gonna trim off. I'm going to go just a tiny bit longer because I want to thin that edge just a little bit. So I'm going to take it, I'm still going to hold the thinning shears at the same angle, but this way when we trim it, it will have a nice kind of not so blunt of an edge which is a good thing. And I'm gonna have some of it go to the side. I don't want this all to be bang. But now I can see my guide at least. So I'm gonna cut it right to where I can see right through. If you can't see the guide, don't take your hair, don't cut. And then again, I'm gonna take about a quarter inch up and I'm gonna kind of thin those little ends out. Now this side is really heavy. I don't like what it's doing here, so we are gonna soften that as well, kind of uh, also thin the edges, the ends I should say. So I am going to incorporate now kind of that side so I can start making this one a little bit um, softer. Do you see the point? So here's what I just cut. Here's the side. So if we were to continue on with that line, that little point there is exactly what we have to trim off. I'm going to go just a little bit longer than that. 
because I'm going to take my thinning shears now and just kind of do that. Okay, so now before I can really kind of get in there and, and curl this, I'm going to have to kind of get the dampness out a little bit. So I'm just going to take my blow dryer now and just kind of get the, the dampness out and then I'm going to curl it. Okay, I'm going to spray a little bit of the It's a 10 just down here uh, on toward the ends just to protect it. It's, it's definitely a heat protector, so I don't want to go too crazy with it because then it kind of makes even, this is human hair, so that's why I'm using that one, but it'll just uh, kind of end up uh, gumming it up, kind of. Okay, so I've, I finished curling it, kind of tousled it a little bit with my fingers, and and this is uh, this is the hairspray I use on my wigs, my synthetic fibers. I just don't have any human hair hairspray at the moment. It works fine. Anyway, it's always a little um, it's always a little too curly the very first time I do it, and then the next day it relaxes and it looks a little different. And you know, I don't have to style my human hair toppers every single time I put them on my head. I just kind of work with what they give me, you know, that day. Um, anyway, so this one's this one's really really curly right now. I'm always so excited when I get to style human hair because it takes a curl so beautifully and it really is exactly like styling your own hair. Anyway, here is, um, this is the Emily, nicely trimmed up. All right guys, so really the main message that I want to convey with this is that don't get hung up too much on the length of the human hair toppers. You, you gotta look at the coverage, see if that base is gonna give you the coverage that you need and want, and see what the construction of that base is made out of, and see if you like that scalp appearance, um, and the color, of course. And everything else, you can have someone else do, or you can do it yourself. You can trim it, do what you need. Uh, toppers are a little bit tricky in that you got to be careful because it's just a, some hair. It's not a full-on wig, so you can't get too carried away with layering and whatnot because if you aren't careful, you're going to not have any hair left to your topper. So be really careful when you thin. Start down low on the hair, just the very ends if you're really unsure um, because you don't want to overdo that. I think you're going to be fine. Again, you don't have to be a licensed professional to do wonderful work on your faux hair pieces. I have seen, I would say, the best <laughs> work from people who have absolutely no background whatsoever. Um, and just be careful and be cautious, be overly cautious. That way, if you have it a little long, you, you'll know about exactly at that point how much more you need to trim. And if you're completely uncomfortable with it, then by all main, means, track down someone who is comfortable with it. All right, until next time, stay young at heart.